So let us thank God for life that he has spared. And especially we are in the 10th month. Gradually the year is coming to an end. Let us remember we began the year with so many people. Some have lost their lives. But by the grace of God, you and I, we are still on the land of the living. So we cannot take this grace for granted. Give thanks to God for his goodness. And so Lord, today, we give you thanks, we give you praise. We thank you for our lives. We thank you for family, friends, our loved ones. We thank you for our nation and our leaders. We bless your name for your goodness and mercies upon our lives. Today, Lord, we come before you, bringing our thanks to you, O oh God, for all that you have provided for us in the course of the year. Today, as we celebrate harvest, we are thankful to you for the food that you provide, the good weather that you give to us to plant our crops. We thank you for our farmers through whom, O oh God, you supply abundant of food for us. We thank you, O oh God, for retailers, the market women, all those who make it possible for us to get food to eat, we want to thank you for the bounty and all the food that we have demonstrated and showcased this morning. All these things, oh God, it comes as a result of you, oh God. So we want to thank you. Even as we are thanking you, we commit this moment into your hands, especially as your word is coming to us, O oh God. We pray that give us the grace to be able to accept your word and put them into practice, O oh God. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our heart be pleasing unto you, O oh God. So Lord, have your own way. Talk to me, O oh God, that I will be able to talk to your people. We thank you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, today, as you know, today is our Harvest Thanksgiving Sunday. And Harvest is one of the most favorite Sundays in the year. We think of the special Harvest hymns, the display of nature, the display of various food items, Harvest Sunday is a time we pause, noticing the abundance with which God has filled our lives. And you see, giving thanks and expressing thanks to God is by trusting him that God is working all things for his good purposes, my brothers and sisters. So we are here today to give thanks and praise to God for his creation and the many gifts he bestows upon us. God has given us so many gifts we cannot think of. The gift of life, the gift of family and friends, the gift of plenty food with variety. Indeed, God satisfies our desires with good things. And I want you to just pause and list the things that you have. The many blessings that God has bestowed upon you. Just pause and think about all these things. My brothers and sisters, the hymn writer says, count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. So in this harvest time, we reflect on the goodness and the mercies of God. Harvest is designed for the congregation to give thanks to God, to celebrate the goodness of God. 
and also to remember our dependence on God. So at Harvest Thanksgiving, we remember to show our appreciation to God for providing us with rain, providing us with food, the shelter, and the every blessings that he bestowed upon us. Above all, we thank him for giving us the gift of his son, Jesus Christ, and the privilege of sharing his poverty, weakness, suffering, and his death. So today, as we celebrate harvest and give thanks and praise to God, I'm reading from Matthew chapter 21, verse 37 to 41. Matthew 21, 37 to 41 is our test. And it reads, Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. Verse 38, But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is her. Come, let us kill him. And give his inheritance. Verse 39. So they seized him. Threw him out of the vineyard. And killed him. My brothers and sisters. Our theme. We are tenants. And not owners. In God's created world. So all of us. We are just tenants. We are not the owners. Of this world. God is the owner. We are just tenants and stewards of God's creation. So today as we celebrate harvest, we must understand that we are tenants, only tenants. So those who think the whole world belongs to them, that is not true. It is fallacy. We are only tenants. My brothers and sisters, we are just servants and tenants of this earth. So I ask the question, if we are tenants of this world, the question is, are we good tenants or wicked tenants to God's creation? Are you good tenants or wicked tenants? In God's creation. You see the truth is. You and I. Do not own this earth. God is the owner. Because God is the owner. He expects justice. And righteousness. For his creation. We are just tenant. And a tenant is a person. Who occupies land. Or property rented from a landlord. So God is the landlord of this earth. And we are not. Because we are not tenants. Because we are tenants, sorry. On this earth. And God is the owner. It is our duty to leave our planet the same way we arrived here. And even better. To take good care of it. We are to preserve the earth. And its natural resources. It is our collective duty. To repair the earth. Not to destroy it. We are just renters. Of the world. There are some of us. Who do not care. To rape the earth. Regardless of what. It does to the future generation. As long as they get what they need, they don't care. My brothers and sisters, today, it seems knowledge is exploding. But at the same time, our world is saturated with violence and abuse against creation. Abuse and violence are common today in our world. That does not belong to us. We have become so wicked tenants to God's created world. We have become bad stewards of God's world. 
my brothers and sisters, today we abuse creation. And by so doing, destroying each other. Today some people abuse without justice. Some people are murdered for no reason. It is a disheartening to see today how some people are being abused in every race, class, educational background. Many people, especially women and children, are victims of this kind of abuse and violence in our society. My brothers and sisters, today, many women are embarrassed by their abuses. Sometimes, they do not want anyone to know. So it is better to stay with the abuser than to leave. Some women stay with their abusive spouses because they love them and are committed to reforming them. They are constantly forgive them and give them another chance. Abusers use different forms of abuse to exercise their control. It may take the form of physical, verbal, emotional, economical, and sexual abuse. Today, humanity has deviated from the principles of God and by so doing sought to abuse nature and fellow human beings. Today, abuse comes in many faces and forms. There is the abuse of neglect, abuse of hunger and poverty because of greediness, of degrading the, the, the environment. We torture the environment, exploiting creation, excruciating, using bad languages to destroy each other. My brothers and sisters, as we celebrate harvest today, it calls for us to reflect on the tears of creation and many women and children who suffer often in secret from devastating abuse in their homes. Most victims try to hide the abuse from family and friends and even their doctors and their pastors. Many people today suffer in secret behind closed doors, often embarrassed by their abuses. My brothers and sisters, let us remember that our God is a God of justice, a God who cares for the poor and the oppressed, a God who is concerned about his creation. So in our test, we notice violence and abuse of the tenants. There was no justice for these slaves who were sent by the landowner. We notice abusive and violence words and language in the text that expressed by Jesus in the parable. So Jesus used words like seize, beat, kill, stone, put to miserable death, broken to pieces, crash. These were the abusive words and language that we often hear in our society today. My brothers and sisters, so if you look at the text, verse 37 to 39, he says, finally, he sent his son to them, saying, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, this is the hair. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him. They threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Is it not what is happening today in our context? My brothers and sisters. So looking at the context of this text, the parable, it said when the authority of Jesus was questioned, by the religious leaders in Jerusalem. In answering to their question, Jesus told this parable 
to explain how leaders abuse and mistreat others. So in the parable, we are told, a landowner planted his own vineyard. He leases out and left. At harvest time, he sent his servants to collect the proceed or the produce from the tenant. We are told all were mistreated by this wicked tenant. He sent his only son. They killed him as well. So by killing the son, the tenant became land owners. So in this parable, the land owner stands for God. The tenants represent Israel's leaders and today the wicked leaders that we have in our world who had been entrusted by God with the tax of shepherding his people and creation. So in the test, the tenants were supposed to yield what was due in the harvest of their crops apart for, as part of their contract with the landowner. They were expected to send a portion of the harvest to the landowner as payment in their rebellion. They broke the contract and acted more like tenant than tenant. They hoped to take what belonged to the owner of the vineyard as if it was their own. My brothers and sisters, they acted out evil deed. They used violent and abusive behavior. They beat one. They killed another and stoned others. They forgot that the vineyard never belonged to them. They forgot or rejected their covenant with the landowner. These wicked tenants forgot that they were merely stewards or managers of somebody's property. The same is true for us today, my brothers and sisters. Today, many of us act like these wicked tenants in the test. It is clear that we owe something back to God. We sometimes forget that we are under the delusion of ownership. We think we own everything. When in reality, God is the owner of all things. My brothers and sisters, the point is that God is the owner of all things. You would have worked hard for all that you have. Remember that it is God who gave you the strength to work for what you have. So what you have does not belong to you. It is for God. All we have belongs to God. We are only stewards of whatever that we have. We are only tenant. God's intentions for creation were not only to reserve God's character, but also to provide for all that God has made, including natural systems and non-human life deeds. My brothers and sisters, God provides for human physical needs, including food, water, shelter, clothing, energy. He provides for human and non-human life both now and into the future. Today, as we celebrate harvest, the question is, have we been wicked tenants or good tenants as far as creation is concerned. The point is that we all represent this wicked tenant in the parable in some way. Every one of us has been given a vineyard by God as tenant of God's creation. How are we taking care of the vineyard that God has given to us? My brothers and sisters, the vineyard that God has given to us to take care of 
It could be our families. It could be our communities. It could be our work, our church, our environment. All are part of God's vineyard. The question is, how are we taking care of this vineyard that God has entrusted into our hands? How are we taking care of our families? How are we taking care of the environment that God has entrusted into our hands? Are we good tenants or stewards? Or are we behaving as these wicked tenants in our taste? Let us remember again that we are called by God to produce good fruit in this vineyard. Especially in this time of pandemic. How are we using the gift that God has given to us to help others? How are we helping others in these difficult times? God has left us with our own vineyard, our own blessings, our vineyard of gifts, talents, and charisma. He has provided all of these to us so that we can use it to help others. My brothers and sisters, we are truly tenants. He has leased our gift to us, the talent that we have. God gave so that we can use it to help others. Are we being good tenants? Are we using what he has leased to us for his greater glory? My brothers and sisters, as I conclude, how do we view the gift and the blessings our Lord has given to us? Are we prideful about our skills and abilities? Or do we praise God for loaning them to us? Are we, our motives, less noble and focus more on us than God who gave us the talent and the gift? Are we egocentric or Christocentric? My brothers and sisters, as tenants of God, creation. Today, God wants us to respond to the cry and the abuse of creation. He wants us to respond to the cry and abuse of women and children. God does not want anyone to live in violence, much less women and children as a society. We need to reject all forms of abuse against God's creation, which includes our physical environment, as well as against women and children, against the poor and the needy. As a church community, we need to help by leading the crusade to repair the environment and to protect the weak and the vulnerable in the society. Let us remember that God is the ruler and we are accountable. One day we will stand before God and give an account. So if you look at the test, God provided everything for the tenant. But when it was time for them to give an account, they took abusive way to defend themselves. So the point is that one day, all of us, we will stand before God and give an account how we treat each other and how we treat nature. So as I conclude, my brothers and sisters, I want to remind all of us that we are not in charge of this earth, but God, as individuals and as a church, we can and should be God's messengers of love, liberation, and peace for those who suffer as a result of environmental degradation. Let us be sensitive but strong in our response to the creation and each other. Let us be compassionate but firm in our resolve to bring God's liberating grace 
so many people who are abused and suffer from violence. Let us bring God's liberating grace to the environment. The environment also needs liberation. God is calling you and I to reach out beyond ourselves to liberate God's creation once women and children suffering from abuse. Today, let us remember, God is calling all of us to a world of justice in which one is not shut out, where everyone is welcome at the banquet table, a world of justice in which every plate has food on it, a world of righteousness in which there are no cries for help because no one is made a victim. A world of justice where weak are protected. The vulnerable I looked after. The poor are not abused. A world of justice and righteousness which no one seeks advantage at the expense of another, even when no one is watching. A world of justice and righteousness which no one cut corners to save money by polluting the vineyard's earth, water, and soil. He is inviting us to be good tenants of love, good tenants of mercy, good tenants of forgiveness, justice, generosity, compassion, reconciliation, self-surrender, joy, thanksgiving, peace, obedience, and humility. Let us remember, we are not owners of creation, but we are only tenants, and we are accountable to God. Have you been a good tenant towards God's creation, or bad tenant? May God give us the grace that we will do our part to preserve nature and creation for the next generation. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us bow our heads as we go to God in prayer. As we reflect on these words, ask yourself, what have you contributed to destroy creation? What have you done to destroy what God has given to us. Have we been good tenant or wicked tenant? Remember that whatever you have, God gave for his glory. You are not the owner. God is the owner. You are caretaker. You are tenant. You are steward, a manager, and you are accountable. Father, we thank you for bringing out to God your purpose and your will through this text, reminding us that you are the owner of this universe. You love every human being. You love your creation. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. And when we talk about the world, creation is part of the world, the nature. So Lord, we ask you to give us the grace to take good care of the environment, the little corner that we are, that we will be responsible. We will be a good tenant to God to take care of the vineyard that you have entrusted into our hands. Help us, O oh God, to be good tenants of our families, our workplaces, to other people, O oh God. We want to thank you for your grace and your goodness that has followed us. Help us, O oh God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen.